Now, as of right now, GOOD and the Democratic Alliance, Inkata Freedom Party, the Patriotic Alliance, as well as the African National Congress parties have signed the Declaration of Intent to become part of the Government of National Unity, as many would call it, GNU. Now, yesterday saw the ANC put out a statement updating the country on the political organizations elected in the National Assembly, which will shape and form part of the governing agreement. Welcome to this edition of SOET Today. Joining us uh, via Zoom right now is Dr. Basela Yalezo, who is the independent and uh, social economic and political commentator, and is here to just give us his insights on the government of national unity, what it means for the economy of South Africa. Dr. Basela, much appreciated for joining us. Uh, welcome to the show. Many thanks, my brother. I'm quite delighted to be here and uh, greetings to you and the viewers at home. Much appreciated. I mean, you know, there are talks about the policy and economic uncertainty under the government of national unity, especially in terms of the fiscal policy and the economic reforms there. What does uh, this, uh, you know, put investors and uh, consumers, just generally, what does this mean for, uh, you know, uh, for the economy of this country? Um, on my side, I don't really share um, the, I'll, I'll say the uneasiness or discomfort is my other community does and any other South African that has so far. I just think we will be jumping the gun if we were to express extreme discomfort or, or, or um, a bit of a doubt about what's going to happen next. We've just come out, out, out of elections which were quite peaceful. And I think the rule of law in South Africa is quite stable and we should be able to deal with legalities because things fall apart in a democratic society when the, there's total collapse of the political structures, meaning if there's no, there's no political certainty. We do have political certainty in this dynamic because we come from elections and the laws in South Africa are still intact. I just think for me, for, from now going forward, I think I have a bit of positivity that things might just assist going forward because we come from a period where one ruling party, um, although the one ruling party had all the good policies in the world, they failed to implement their own policies. I just think now that uh, there's a government of national unity, one person might have the duty to implement, although he's not the one who came up with these policies. And if there's a failure or if that person does his own or her own thing, we've got the rule of law, which will give us comfort. So at this stage, I'm not so alarmed. And I don't necessarily think that we are in a better or in a worse off situation. And if we will go to a, a worse off situation, I think it still remains to be seen. I mean, Basela, uh, you know, many of your colleagues are saying that uh, the GNU, you know, it leans more on the business side. I mean, private sector uh, participation could somehow help, uh, you know, tackle some of those important structural issues in the economy and change the country's economic uh, direction. What's your view on that? On my side, I think things are going to change somehow for the better, particularly because everyone is under pressure. If ANC does not implement policies in whatever ministries they are going to occupy, the other parties have shown that they are going to take over or the South African citizens will vote for those people. So I think it is more critical for them to deliver on services and to deliver in terms of sm small, medium enterprises and in terms of policy implementation so that the business sector can have a strength. I mean, uh, the business se sector is complained about one, corruption, two, um, uh, uh, the red tape, Three, they have complained about the issue of load shedding. They have complained about the issue of crime. They have complained about um, the, the, the proper governance. So I think now we are heading to a situation where everyone will be forced to do um, proper governance. And that on its own will attract investors. Because for you to grow the economy, you ought to give investors confidence. 
And I think we are heading towards that direction. I hope I'm not wrong in my positivity, but I just think the, the, the situation that we find ourselves in will bring confidence to business because if ANC or any other party don't deal with the issues that the private sector is complaining about, it simply means we will not be able to grow the economy, we will not be able to employ more people and the economy or will not be able to, to collect taxes which in turn will fund the fiscals and the expansion of the economy. So I, I just think now the business sector is most likely to have confidence because it's not one ruling party that they are dealing with. It's a multiplicity of parties which are looking uh, at the failures or will look at the failures of one another. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really see a situation where we, we, we might have a collapse of this uh, GNU and then it leads to a disaster in terms of the business sector. Mr. Bayelezo, um, Bayelezo, much appreciated for coming in. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. I could have, you know, had you for some time now just to expand more. But we'll definitely, uh, uh, you know, get your insights as time progresses on this. Much appreciated for coming in. Thank you so much. That was uh, Basela Yelezo, who is the, an independent and social, socio-economic and political commentator, just speaking to us about what uh, this new coalition or government of national unity means for South Africa. Let's take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwan. In our reactions to the recently established government of national unity have been mixed thanks to an agreement reached by the ANC, the DA, the IFP and the PA. Now, President-elect uh, Cyril Ramaphosa was re-elected for the second term on Friday last week. Uh, now, tonight we listen in on some of the responses from various sectors of the economy just to share their views on the coalition government. Now, joining us uh, right now is Trevor Shaku, who is the spokesperson for SAFTU. Uh, he's here to tell us uh, his thoughts of uh, this uh, proposed uh, GNU. Trevor, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, uh, let me just get your reaction first from, uh, you know, the South African uh, Federation of Trade Unions. They're just talking uh, more about uh, the GNU. I mean, recently, uh, as, as, as a federation, you said that, um, uh, I think it's one of your leaders, they're saying that, uh, you know, the GNU came from a place of difficulty. There. Let me get your reaction uh, first on this uh, proposed um, uh, new government. Sure. Look, uh, in our view, Indeed, the GNU firstly comes as a result of the fact that South African population that voted did not give either of the parties that contested an outright majority. So whether uh, we liked it or not, uh, we had to arrive at a multi-party government of any sort, whether they call it a coalition government, a grand coalition government, or okay. a government of national unity. That does not really matter. But what matters is that we had to arrive at a multi-party government constituted mainly because of the fact that none of those parties got a 50% above. But secondly, we've got to consider that the uh, issues around the ANC and what forced it into this type of a government. And in our view, it was caught between two places yeah. of placing two contradictory audiences or targets. The first one was that of the rank and file members of the African National Congress who do not want the DA. But secondly, they had the people in the uh, business sector, the so-called maggots, yeah. who do not want the EFF. So in order to please these particular constituencies, what the ANC has done as a way out of that particular impasse they then have uh, decided to call it the government of national unity. But nonetheless, like I said, it matters not. What we know is that it's a government of multi-party. Yeah, I mean, speaking of government of multi-party, we know that, uh, you know, some parties have been saying that, look, uh, we were not included sure. in, in this. And we've tried uh, to, you know, get hold of uh, the ANC particularly just to, you know, get a sense of exactly what is on the table so that we can be able to contribute there. But uh, looking at, uh, you know, in terms of coalition government, uh, you know, lo on local level, 
um, it hasn't worked for, 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 for some time now. We've been seeing motions of no confidence, uh, you know, mm -hmm. against the different mm -hmm. mayors. You look at Tswani, for instance. Sure. You look at uh, Joburg also, uh, for instance. It had, I think, five mayors mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in the last uh, five years. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this will certainly work for the people of this country? Look, if in the agreement, the provision is that they have to ensure that this government does not collapse and there are no one or no neither of the parties involved in that particular government yeah. who will pull a plug merely because of a particular difference of course then it will work because we have to look at the preconditions for why would a particular party pull out of that particular agreement if the precondition for that yeah. is an agreement then we are of course set up for a great instability in the nearer future because any party can pull out of that whenever there's a difference. But if the precondition is not that, therefore it is my contention that we're not going to experience the instability that we see in local government in various metros yeah. and even just uh, smaller local municipalities. I mean, let's talk about the workers now. I mean, we know that, uh, you know, there's different policies mm. uh, from the ANC to the DA. Um, and, uh, you know, you look at the DA has been chanting uh, different messages over the years, particularly looking at the issues of uh, the national minimum wage also, mm. the issues of, uh, you know, austerity measures that have been imposed uh, for some time now. Do you think that um, the workers of this country now will be taken seriously? Because, I mean, as federations, as, you know, different workers unions, You've complained uh, that uh, workers of this country have not been prioritized in terms of different things, either filling in on vacant posts, uh, promotions, uh, you know, uh, working conditions. Mm. Mm. Um, do you think that, uh, you know, some, somehow will be able to see a shift in this regard? Look, insofar as workers' interests are concerned, I don't think we're going to see any drastic change that is positive in particular. Why am I saying this? It's because the parties that are involved in this government, it is the ANC, it is PA, it is IFP, it is DA. Yeah. Now, if we were to assess the manifestos of this organization, one would have to understand that the trajectory of economic policy and macroeconomic framework is not going to change because what the ANC has been implementing in the past eight years has been fiscal consolidation, which has led to fiscal austerity, has been the retention of a monetary policy that requires the continuation, the continued sham independence of yeah. the Central Bank, of the South African Reserve Bank, and its restrictive monetary policy of hiking interest rates to stabilize prices. It is also uh, ANC that has implemented an industrial policy that merely is premised on attracting foreign direct investment yeah and also ensuring that they create the, uh, the so-called enabling environment for the private sector. So they've relegated the state's role in investment uh, in the economy from that of directly investing in state-owned enterprises, as we've seen in the past, to that of merely creating an enabling environment or a conducive environment for the private sector to come and grow the economy. What do these policy trajectories or policy provisions mean? We have seen in the past eight years, the ANC's implementation of these policies has not really helped anything. Yeah. But is any of the parties that will be entering this government with the ANC having any different program? No. It is actually just a reaffirmation of the same programs. The DA is looking for the same thing. It is looking for fiscal sustainability and fiscal discipline. It is extolling the independence of the central bank and restrictive monetary policy as a main policy of monetary in this particular country. It is also again saying that the state should not play any role directly in creating jobs. What it has to play is to create that conducive environment. The same is to be applied to the DA. In fact, things might be a little bit worse yeah. in the context that the DA is also having some regressive policy measures in the labor market policy. Now, the labor market policy of the ANC had been a little bit uh, lukewarm in terms of its orientation to workers. That is, it has made serious concessions, concessions of the national minimum wage, concessions of protecting the right to strike. Of course, they started attacking it in 2019, 
but there are those particular concessions they've made. So the yeah. DA's propositions is that they are going to have to repeal the national minimum wage, repeal the employment equity, especially the provision that provides that racial equity has to be applied in employment across the industries and by extension the companies that are involved in these particular industries. They are also, of course, calling for the scraping of preferential procurement in yeah. the state. So these are the problems that, in my view, would be added to the already macroeconomic framework of the ANC. That was regressive anyway. Trevor, unfortunately, we've came out of, uh, I mean, we, 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 we've came out of uh, uh, time there. Uh, I mean, our time has run out. That's what I'm actually meaning to say. But I would have loved to hear your thoughts on particularly looking at uh, uh, who should be taking the different positions, uh, you know, from Saftu's perspective. Mm. But we'll definitely have you on the show in that uh, regard. There was Trevor Shango, who is the spokesperson for Saftu. They're giving us his thoughts on uh, the new government. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show and I've been in conversation about the government of a national unity and hearing uh, various responses to it. Now, let's bring in uh, Donald Mkwanazi, who is a social activist and is here to just give us his response and just get uh, his reaction on the uh, G and you there. Donald, much appreciated for coming in. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Let's start by getting your reaction on uh, the formation of the government of national unity. Um, what's your take on that? Um, it's really unprecedent, un unprecedented times, really, the ones we're in right now. But for me personally, uh, the recent developments have really led me to question the unity in the GNU. Because I feel like the unity at this point, you end up one can one one will assume that unity is for is for is for political parties to ensure political power. Since now that no one uh, got majority majority votes, on but also one can also assume that the unity maybe would be for for different heads of political parties to come to a table and say no, because now uh, we find uh, ourselves uh, uh, we like we find ourselves in this situation. But how can we then combine heads and really ensure that this country is going forward? So it's really two sided. Is it uh, for self interest of political parties as they've been the, the, like the recent activities, you know? Uh, I want Minister of Police, I yeah. want Speaker. So it's really, do you know if really does it really represent the interest of, like at heart, the interest of the people or not? So I, I've really questioned the GNU, but uh, that, like generally, I feel like GNU at this point, it's really what uh, 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 must happen at this point because no one got majority vote. So how do we then govern the country? Hates must combine, but it's how the hates are combining, which is mm. questionable for me. I mean, coming into, you know, this ultimate uh, decision of uh, government of national unity, I mean, um, you know, a lot of people were questioning the issue, as you said, uh, it was more of uh, politics of self-interest sure. than the people uh, there. Um, uh, you know, what would you want to see, uh, well, this new government? Uh, we know that uh, the president will be inaugurated uh, tomorrow and then subsequently uh, in the next few days we'll know of the executives in terms of the ministers and stuff. What would be, uh, you know, the focus, uh, 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 the, the plan going forward? I think that's the question okay. that I was looking for uh, in terms of um, your plea for government. Thing is, now it's youth month, and I can tell you that uh, young people are, are, are really drowning in a pool of depression uh, in our communities because of unemployment. The economy should be the first priority of these uh, political uh, parties as they go to union building. They must take off their political heads and really put the interests of the people at heart. They must address the economy. The economy currently is really going down. And at this point, uh, I, I don't blame people who never voted because I feel like now it's, a, it's, it's more of a, of, a, of, of, of a game, you know. You, you, like you get to increase your fortunes every five years, and, but at, with, like at, like at what expense? At yeah. the expense of, of the voters. So the economy, they must address the economy. Then even in 2026, people will go and vote because the economy will, like, would have been addressed. People will have gotten jobs. And also, even, even in terms of higher education, the, 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 system, the, the education system of these countries will, will really not be, be of our, of our, of our like, will not really benefit us years to come. So we need to address those things before this country collapses to its deep, 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 
deep end. So the economy mm -hmm. is a priority. I mean, speaking about uh, the people that uh, did not go to vote, I mean, why do you think there was low voter turnout? What could have been the problem there? I blame every political party that existed before these elections. Because really, the trust of, like the trust of politics towards people, buying the comrade, comrade have looted money. The comrade, if you go to hospital right now, you, you like, can't even get, get help. If you go to a police station at 11 o'clock, police station by Kuwait, because uh, the, 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 the king, my police are at Taba. So really, there's nothing that is really coming all right in this country. If you're a student, you sleep in a pavement, but if a minister of higher education, you know. So like everything really has, has, really, has really crippled like in this country to, to, like, to a point where people feel like if we vote, we are actually enriching them. That's why they never uh, preach to the polls. Understand? So and I keep blaming. I keep mm. blaming my comrade Alutile, and uh, now it's really disgusting. He, he, like everything, like it's a mess. It's a mess right now. And uh, I honestly, I don't know what it will take for people like like to regain that trust towards politics. But eventually they must, because right now we're being spoon fed leaders we never voted for. For example, you will you will be having for example a minister of presidency, uh, in, like in the form of John Stenhazen. We never voted for John. In fact, I believe they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the DA grew by one percent. If I'm not mistaken. We never voted for such people, but those are the repercussions of not voting. So we may have such issues that, are, that we are facing as, 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 the, as the people of this country, but we must go and vote eventually. And really, this must be a wake-up like wake call for us. I mean, speaking about that, you, 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 you're referring to, uh, for in case if uh, John Stenazen becomes the minister in the presidency mm -hmm. in charge of uh, monitoring and evaluation, for instance. Um, but uh, I mean, how this has been structured, uh, as, as, as we've seen, uh, the deputy speaker is from the DA, the speaker is from the ANC. So somehow, somehow uh, we saw with the election of uh, the premier, uh, the inauguration, I mean, the, 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 the swearing in of the premier in KZN. Uh, positions have been, uh, you know, allocated to different parties that are part of the uh, GNU, with the DA also having some critical posts uh, in terms of MECs there. Don't you think that this will somehow uh, foster um, you know, um, accountability in the government that will be coming in? Yeah, to a certain degree it will, because then if you have a John who is uh, really uh, monitoring people like uh, Bob Lady who are really sleeping on the job, then it's good for us citizens because then Blade will, will, will have to deliver. But now also it's really, uh, I would like to caution the ANC and these parties in the GNU that they must stop calling this thing a GNU. This is not a GNU, it's a grand coalition. The reason why I'm saying that is because of, you can see uh, what happened to KZN today. It's, it's, it's DA, it's ANC and IFP. And you can see the positions that DA got, finance and public works. These people really have an agenda, but that, will that agenda benefit people? We don't know. So really, we don't know. Maybe in, like in terms of accountability, to a certain degree, it will benefit us to say, they must be accountable and the DA will ensure that they must be accountable. But we don't know in terms of their deal, what are their, the, like the, the agreements, or where now you don't do this, you do this. Because for example, Helen Zile, yesterday they watch or you know, and Kapalapala uh, won't be involved in the impeachment of a president we voted for. It tells you that these, these, deal, these dealings uh, which happened in private uh, really are, are really uh, against our people and we must caution them. Because it's, it's wrong, it's wrong. People voted for them, even the DA. They were voted by their constituency, mm. but now they are going against what they were. Just voted a quick for. one before I let you go. Um, as a young person, uh, who would you want to see in terms of uh, the two ministries, basic education and tertiary, I mean, Department of Higher Education and Training? Who, who, sorry, I I who would you want to be elected to become a minister in those? Maybe just to pick your brain in that. Yeah, I think is. Uh, Should they return also? Ah, uh, Jim Tsera can return. I've always maintained this sentiment that people like Jim Tsera are tired. They must go and retire. So uh, it's important. That is why I'm saying if this was really a, 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 a is it in a GNU, uh, people like Bumus Meman who have passion in education, they will have been roped in to say, Chief, come and solve the problem that we're facing here. Uh, really, it's a crisis that is coming, so please solve it here. But now, uh, it's like it's their own arrangement. Uh, maybe mm. they will put, uh, uh, who's, who's, who's this? Uh, 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 maybe they'll put in Jim Tech again, who knows? Because I, I saw she's back. Mm. So, uh, people like Musma Mani, for example, uh, or even take from these new parties, people like Bosong Ezo Zibi, they are back, Bo Makashle Kana, they are back, Bo, 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 even from the PA, there are so many young people that I saw. 
just so that we, we don't get these people who have been giving us uh, uh, the same answers each and every election cycle because really we don't see any change here. Blade in Zimande? Uh, Blade in Zimande must, 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 must retire, man. Uh, Blade in Zimande has failed. Students are sleeping in pavements. Students have, no, have not even received allowances as we speak right now, but they're expected to come write tests and everything. Then next year, they told that we are excluded because we never passed. I never passed because of the conditions that I was facing back then. So people like Blade in Zimande should retire. And they say, I should retire. And I said, 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 I Donald Mukwanazi, much appreciated. Thank Unfortunately, you. we've run out of time. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was uh, Donald Mukwanazi, who is a social activist, giving us his uh, thoughts on the government of uh, national unity, saying that it is a grand coalition and uh, someone who works to you know, achieve political and social change and also telling us uh, who he thinks are the uh, best uh, ministers who could potentially fill the basic and uh, tertiary education departments there. Well, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV .today. or you can simply just call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Bye, Tura Dira, and the rest of the team has good night from us, and thank you for watching.